Okay, since Matt26 from the United Kingdom, who's another user at hardwarebot.org, managed to beat many of my top scores with the Core i7-950 CPU, apart from the Super Pi 32M result, which is definitely the hardest result of all of those scores. So I thought about giving my 950 CPU another attempt, like see if we could take some of those top scores back, if not all of them. It will be a very hard task, as his CPU is definitely a bit better than mine, but I do have some very good like uh, efficiency tricks to uh, keep my performance at a very good level. So uh, let's see what happens. We might be able to squeeze even a bit more frequency from the CPU. We'll see. So uh, the whole rig is based on the Asus Rampage 3 uh, Black Edition, which is uh, my favorite motherboard for these Bloomfield CPUs. It's definitely the very best motherboard for those CPUs. When it comes to 980X, like Golf Town overall, you can actually have a bit better result with the X58 OC from Gigabyte, but it's also a personal preference if you ask me. T-Rex container. T-Rex is definitely better for these CPUs compared to the F1 Dark. If you ask me, the T-Rex is a lot faster, so I find it much easier to control the temperatures with the T-Rex compared to the F1 Dark. Only with the very old and relatively low load 775 CPUs, the F1 Dark can be a bit better compared to the T-Rex container. And of course, with most of the motherboards, the T-Rex will not even fit. Three sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX2 memory, bin by Sam the OCX or Tapacar, NVIDIA 6500 GT, graphics card only to display the monitor signal with capture card once again and Superflower Leadex 8 pack 2000 watt power supply. Kimping cooling KPX thermal paste between the uh, CPU and the container so let's give it a go. I have two operating systems prepared for this whole thing so Windows XP plus Server 2003 so will be very interesting. So let's hope for the best let's see what happens and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing what kind of frequencies we can get. And no uh, Inferno backplate with uh, these platforms. So I never used the Inferno heating plate with 1366 or 775 platform. But yeah, I'll get going and I'll get back to you uh, in the operating system. Do it now. Yes, yes, yes. Finally, I managed to get the uh, W Prime 32 record. So, managed to improve the clock speed by like 20 to 25 megahertz. Temperature went from like one minus 125 ish to minus 145 ish. So, 4.25 was the previous top score by Matt 26 from the UK. My previous top score was 4.265, and the brand new top score for W Prime 32 with the Core i7 950 is 4.234 so pretty good result if you ask me only single channel as it doesn't matter for this test pretty decent on frequency 
and yeah, Rampage Street Black Edition BAUS 0505. Don't know which BAUS version would be the best. Not sure if it really matters in the end. But yeah, damn awesome. Okay, so that's the W Prime 1024M, top score with the Core i7 950, with a score of that's uh, 2 minutes 16.7 A1 seconds. The previous top score by uh, uh, Matt26 was at 137.094 seconds. So the uh, improvement is around like 300 milliseconds at 5534 MHz versus uh, Matt's like 5525 so like 20 meg like 10 megahertz more on the frequency and uh, maybe a tiny bit better efficiency but yeah very hard test to be and i think matt was actually trying this benchmark very hard when he was benching this for the first time or when he was aiming for these top scores so huge thumbs up to matt 26 from the uk but yeah so that's it for the w primes So that's at least it. So 14.86 uh, Pi Fast top score, previous one 14.88, 569. Memory uh, like 1980, 675, 20, 181, 4950 on the Encore. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The whole session was extremely difficult. It took me a lot of LN2 to get those few remaining top scores, but I managed to take back all of the important top scores with the Core i7-950. So uh, if we start with W Prime 32, a nice tiny improvement of like 16 milliseconds. So the new top score is 4.234. The previous top score was by Matt 26 at 4.25 seconds. My own like previous best was 4.265, but that was like a sandbag. The one I had visible for a very long time was like 4.2 W Prime 1024M, a nice 300 millisecond improvement over the previous top score by Matt26. Very difficult test as well to break the top score in. Then SuperPi 1M and Pi Fast were definitely the hardest benches like overall during this session. The issue is that you can run those tests at the utmost highest uh, CPU frequency if the temperature is controlled perfectly but then what usually happens is that after you're past the test and you start opening up cpu's and so on or it can happen even idle on the desktop the whole system hangs and it often it will give a blue screen or it will just reset on its own but if you have capture card like me you can still save the score just fine because a capture card is like a constant screenshot device so it's actually pretty handy for these legacy pc components what we use for overclocking so SuperPi 1M, I got the new top score of 7.078 seconds twice. The previous top score was by Matt26 at like 7.094, so a 16 millisecond improvement once again. My own previous best score in 1M was like 7.1-ish, like 7.108, I think. So a pretty nice result, but again, it was extremely difficult to take that one down. The hardest one was definitely Pi Fast. So the target was 14.88 seconds. My previous best was 14.89 with much better like Encore frequency. But actually, I didn't find Encore like extremely important in Pi Fast. It's, it's uh, much more important in 32M compared to Pi Fast, for example. But anyways, I got 14.84. Uh, once, but uh, it failed when I started opening up CPU-Z and everything, so it just crashed. 
both W primes, 1M, Pi fast and so on. So the only test I didn't try was the Super Pi 32M because I still hold that one and I didn't want to waste any more LN2 with the CPU during this session because I already used I think too much LN2 with the 950 during the session. I can always return to that thing if I want to later. I'm missing the CPU-Z uh, call frequency validation. It's still held by some Danish guy at 5.82 gigahertz. And I definitely need a better CPU if I want to uh, take that one down. I think uh, there's no point to push this CPU like overly much, I think. So definitely happy, pretty good scores overall, but again, extremely difficult tests to break the top score in. So huge thumbs up to Matt26. Your runs have been very good. It was very hard to take them down. But yeah, so we'll see what happens in the future. So uh, all of these scores will be uh, visible on hardwarebot.org. So definitely check them out uh, if you are interested in them. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my Patreon page as well if you want to join my Patreon Discord channel and if you want to support my work overall. Thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again. And I will see you on the next one.